This is the second video in our video of making a game in Unity for the students in Year 7. Um, it's a beginner's guide to making a game um, quite quickly. Um, and we've already set up our terrain, we've already put in some trees and some um, textures for the grass and for the sand. And now we're going to actually um, add some coins so we can get our character which I've just zoomed in on here, this character, and we can have him run around in the game and collect some coins, okay? So if we currently press play on the game right now, um, you'll see I go into game mode, here's my character, and he's running around and we've got this great terrain and we've got the sand and the water and all those sorts of things, but he doesn't do anything, all right? So um, we need to have something for him to do. So we're going to create some coins, okay? And he's gonna collect those coins and he'll get points for those coins. So, I'm going back to my scene view. Now, before we get started with the video, one thing that you need to make sure is that you have some sort of code editor on your computer. Now, if you don't have one, I suggest you go on the internet and you download Visual Studio Code. You can see I've got it right here, Visual Studio Code. It's free, it's a fantastic editor, and you can integrate it into Unity so that it becomes your editor for Unity. And in fact, what you do is you download and install that in your computer, then you go to Unity Preferences, and when you're in Unity Preferences, you go to the External Tools, and you can choose one of your editors. Now, um, most people will have something like Visual Studio. Um, I have another one called Brackets, but this one we're gonna use is Visual Studio Code, free to download, comes in and works with Unity really well. So that's the first thing that you wanna do. You wanna make sure you install Visual Studio Code on your computer. Okay, so now let's get to um, creating a, a coin, right? So I'm just gonna zoom back a little bit here, and I'm gonna to go to Object, Game Object, 3D Object, and I'm going to get a cylinder, and I click Cylinder, and there it is, and in fact, I'm just gonna move it so it's not on my man. So there's my cylinder right there, so that's the start of my coin. Now, I want this to be like a coin, like a, a coin that you can collect. So I'm going to go up into the right hand side over here to the scale and I'm actually going to scale my coin to 0.5 um, on the X axis. On the Y I'm going to go 0 0.05 and then on the Z axis I'm going to go to 0.5 as well. Now I've already tested these sizes, so 0 0.5, 0 0.05 and 0 0.5. Um, and if we zoom in on that, if I just get to my cylinder and zoom in, there it is. There's my, my cylinder that's going to be a coin. Now we're going to make that gold and we're going to make it spin around. Now while we're talking about this being a coin, I'm going to go over to here where it says cylinder. I'm just going to rename that. Um, and when I rename it, I'm just going to rename it coin. Okay, so I'm just going to do that there. So I've got my coin. Um, and actually I'm going to add a tag to this coin. Now the reason I want to add the tag is later we're going to do some programming with C Sharp. And you need to have the tag added to this coin so that you know you know that that's what you're going to actually be programming. That's the sort of the element that's going to be programmed. So I go up here onto the right hand side at the top here. While I've got clicked on the coin, I go up here and I click on this untagged and I go down to add tag. And now when I get to this tags, it says it's empty. So I'm just going to hit plus and I'm going to call this one pick up. All one word with a capital P at the start, pick up. And I'm just going to hit save. And then I'm going to go back to my coin and I'm just going to change this tag and make sure it says pick up, right? So I've actually got my pick up there um, so that you can see my coin has become a pick up. Now, I also want to um, change the color of this. I want to add a material. I want to make it look the, like it's, you know, a nice color, a lot nice gold color. So I'm just going to add a color to this now. And to do that, I'm actually going to go into my materials. So I'm going to go to... Um, my assets section here, and I'm going to actually create a new folder here, and I'm going to call it My Materials. That's actually what I'm going to do. So I'll go to my assets here. I'm going to hit Create, and I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call it My Materials. There we go. So I've created a folder called My Materials in my assets. I'm going to double click into that folder, and I'm going to create a new material right here. So I'm going in and creating material right here. And then when the material comes up, we get in the inspector panel all of this stuff over this side. And obviously, I want to choose a nice gold metallic coin color. You could choose silver, you could choose whatever you like. So I'm going up here to the right-hand side. I'm clicking on the color, and I'm going to choose a nice yellowy sort of color on the outside. And then I'm going to pick something that I think is a pretty good gold. Nice yellowy gold right there. And I can see the preview down the bottom here. That looks okay. 
And one of the things I can add is this metallicness to the gold. So the more metallic I put, obviously, the more reflection there is and the more it looks like a piece of gold. So I've just changed that and made that a piece, uh, into a gold shade. Now I'm also going to rename that material right down there. I'm just going to call that gold. Okay, so I've got my shiny gold down here. Now, I want to apply that gold to my coin. So I grab that material, drag it up, and I put it onto the coin, and all of a sudden my, my coin changes color. Now remember, we're in the scene view at the moment. We're not, it's not rotating, it's not doing any of those sorts of things. It's just in the scene view. So um, you can't see the gold and the shininess yet, and we want to make it spinning around and those sorts of things. So you'll see the gold come out a little bit better as we move along. Now, I've got my coin here, and I want to make it spin. Like right where it is on the spot, I want to make it spin. Now to do that, I have to have a C-sharp script. Now to do this script, I'm going to go still in this material section here. It's kind of where I'm keeping my assets. I'm going to go Create, and this time I'm going to go up here to C-sharp script. And I'm going to click on that script right there. And I'm actually going to call this script Rotate. All right, so I'm just going to call it Rotate put it down there, and there's my little script rotate down there. Now, you'll see straight away the assets update. They go, oh, there's a new script here. We, we better load that into the assets. So it loads it into the computer straight away. But we haven't done anything. I haven't coded it or anything yet. So I'm going to grab that script. I'm going to drag it up here, and I'm going to put it onto my coin, into my coin. So now that coin has the script already added to it. And if you have a look down here, it says rotate script. Now, I'm going to click on the three dots here next to this rotate script, and I'm going to say edit script. Now, this is where, when I click edit script, it's going to go and open up our coding program where we actually write the C sharp code. So I'm just going to click that now, and you'll see here it goes, and the code um, screen comes up here ready to go. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of this message and we're ready to change the code here. And look, it already has Unity Engine in there, already has a few things set up ready for us to type. And in fact, we're going to type in this section right here. Now, now that we're into our editor, we're going to go in between these two sets of brackets down here in this void update section down here. And we're going to write just a tiny little bit of um, C-sharp code. Now, you don't have to be um, an excellent code or anything like that. You just need to copy this line of code, and then our coin should start rotating. So I'm going to write transform uh, dot rotate with a capital R. Transform dot rotate in bracket new space vector three uh, bracket. Now we're going to have inside of this bracket our x, y, and z um, coordinates. We have 15, comma, 30, comma, 45, and then that's the degrees that they're going to rotate. We're going to rotate them multiplied by time, but it's not going to be just normal time. It's going to be the time in the game, right? So we call this delta time. Okay, and then we close the bracket, and then we put a semicolon at the end. So that should be it. Transform, rotate, new, vector 3, 15, 30, 45 times time, dot delta time. And that tiny little piece of code, that's everything else is all written for you. We've just typed out one line, essentially. That piece of code, once I hit save, file, save, will save back into Unity. So I'm just going to hide this, go back into Unity. The script will update, so you can see it just updated the script then in the, in the um, window. And now if I actually go through and I hit play, when we go to play our game, that script will run. We'll have our guy here, and there's the coin. So you can see our coin now in front of me is spinning around, and it's got a nice gold color. You can see on the edges when it comes past, it's got good reflection. It's got a shadow on the ground. And if I try and bump into it, I actually bump into it. It gets in the way, right? So it's a solid object that bumps in the way. So that's really good. I'm really happy with that. In fact, I'm so happy with that coin that I want to make that a prefab coin so I can use it over and over and over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here into my, I'm going to stop the game first. I'm going to go into my scene. Then I'm going to go down here into my materials. In fact, I'm going to go to the assets folder. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call it folder, right? And I'm going to call it prefab. Uh, prefab. 
hit enter. Now we talked about prefabs earlier. They're pre-made um, objects that you can put into your game multiple times like the trees that we've used in the past except this time our prefabs are going to be ones that we've made and it's going to be this coin so I'm just going to grab it drag it and drop it down in here and you'll see there's a little preview of my coin here now if I zoom back and remember I'm in my scene here if I zoom back and I decide I want to put that coin in again I can put it there again so now he's got two coins that he could collect and if I grab it again I can come here again. So now I can put multiple coins into my game and um, I don't have to go through and do the tags for the pickups and the colors and the shapes and all. It's all done, right? It's all done once. So now if I hit play, you'll see um, my script starts again and I'll have three coins on the page and they're all rotating. They all happen to be rotating the same way, which is great. That's fine. And we're going to have it so that the little man runs around, he picks up the coins. And every time he picks up a coin, he's going to get a point, right? And the object of the game will be to collect, I don't know, 10 points or 50 points or 100 points. You can hide coins all over the game and then the idea of this game is this guy has to run around and collect all of those points so the next thing we're going to do is write a little bit of a script to make the coins disappear and to add the points now because we already set the tag up as a pickup doing that will be a little bit easier okay now we're going to write the script to make the character um, when he runs around he goes in and he collects the coins right so um, this is him, here we go. If he runs at the moment, he bumps into the coins, right? Or he runs through the coins, right? So it's no good. So we want to make um, some changes to fix that, all right? And I'll show you how do we do that right now. To start with, what we want to do is we actually want to change the coin, right? So I'm just going to click on this coin for a second here. And one of the things that I would like to happen is this is trigger. I want this is trigger turned on. But because we've already got three coins in here, what I don't want to do is change one and not change all three of them. So there's a little trick you can do is once you're in the scene section, you're on the coin, you can go to the prefab, which is up here on the corner. So I'm gonna change the prefab one. I'm gonna change the main prefab one to have is trigger turned on so that that'll then change every single one of the coins. So that is trigger will be turned on on every single one of the coins. I don't have to do it individually on each. So I've just done that. I clicked um, I clicked on open the prefab one. I clicked the is trigger on there. And then I'm just gonna go back to my scene. It'll say, do you wanna save that change? Yes, I wanna save that change. And now um, my coins have that is trigger is turned on. That's one thing that's really important. Now we want to write a script for this guy so that when he runs into the coins, they bump into it, right? They bump into to the coins and he, he take he picks them up and they disappear. So I'm going to go to my third person controller, which is my character. I'm going to just go down and I'm going to go add component. And when I go add component, you can see I've already done it in here. I did a search for the word script and I'm going to add a script. So I just hit new script and I'm going to name my script. I'm going to call it player. Um, let's call it player bump. I'm going to call it player bump, right? Just for the sake of whatever, right? Create and add, and it makes a new script. And if I scroll down a bit further now, um, it, it loads in the script. If I scroll down a bit further on this character, you can see here's my player bump script. Now I want to edit that, so I'm just going to click on here, go into my edit script, and we start off with pretty much a blank script, right? There's nothing here. Now what I want to do is actually want to in, add a new section down below here and I want to talk about that trigger that we just put in for the coin right so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new function in here void um, on trigger um, enter now there are three different ways you can do this you can do enter you can do a stay or you can do an exit so an enter means as you enter into the other um, item so as the my character bumps into the coin when he first makes contact this trigger will happen. You could have an on trigger stay, which means if he bumps into the coin and stays touching the coin, then something happens, or you can do on exit. So he bumps into the coin, and nothing will happen until he moves away from it, and then when he exits the coin, then something will happen. We want to do it on enter, right? And we put in brackets here, and we want to look for it to see if it collides, right? So we're going to put collider, and if it collides with another object, right? So that's, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, okay, so on trigger enter, okay. Now, there's a way we can test this. In fact, let's just do my if statement first. Let's do if an other object 
um, game object if another game object with the tag this is where we did the tags before and it was really um, important that we put the tags on all of those coins with the tag that has pickup okay so if there's an object in the game that it bumps into that has the tag that is pickup then what are we going to do right then what we're going to do is we're going to say other dot game object um, dot set active and we're going to say false so I'll explain that line there so what essentially we're doing is we're saying um, on this top line here if my character bumps into something that has the tag pick up on it then you're going to go to that other object the object that you've bumped into and you're going to set it to false it's not going to be active now active means you can see it on the screen so if we're saying it's false it means we won't be able to see it on the screen so in other words this is saying if my little man runs along bumps into something with a pickup um, as its tag then it's going to hide that item that has the pickup as its tag now there's a way to test this as well and I'm just going to show you this line because it's a pretty important line which is a debug dot log and then in here we can put in the statement we want to make we hit a coin right so now this little line here debug log will actually um, save a write a line of code in our um, log area on the screen that says we hit a coin every time we hit a coin right so that should actually make it so that um, we can recognize that we've hit a coin and we're just testing our program so I'm just going to save that command s go back to my program here you'll see the script loads in and of course I want to run it right so I'm going to hit play let it reload all the scripts, get everything ready, here's my man, he runs along and we hit the coin and the coin disappeared, right? So that's exactly what we wanted. But you'll also notice down here in the corner, the log says we hit a coin. So it's actually telling us that what I did was right, we hit a coin, my, the script's running correctly and we're picking up those coins, okay? So we've got our little guy who runs around, picks up gold coins. Every time we pick up a gold coin, it tells us we hit a coin, which is perfect. That's what I wanted to do, just to test my program. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a title to the screen, maybe down here in the bottom corner that says coins, and we're going to set a number, like um, every time they pick up a coin, they get... 10 cents or they get one cent or they get whatever it is they get one every time they pick up a coin we're going to add like a scoring system the next thing we want to do is we want to add um, a way to count the amount of coins that the guy's collected right so um, you know that if we run around and the, he runs into these coins and he collects the coins there has to be a way to say how do we keep score of that right so what we're going to do is we're going to add um, some user interface to, to our game so I'm on the scene section here I go up the top to game object and I go down to UI user interface right now what we would normally do is grab this one here called text mesh pro which is a new thing that's just come out in unity but I'm actually going to use an old one I'm going to use a legacy one just called text just simple text the easiest quickest way to do it so I'm just going to use this legacy one I click text and you'll see straight away it comes down onto here onto the canvas it's text there. I'm actually going to take the word legacy off and just leave it as text Right, so now I've just got this text thing here. And what that does essentially is it puts some text um, that sits with the camera right in the same spot as the camera. So no matter where the camera goes, the text goes with it as well so that you can always see the score or the count or the lives or whatever it might be. Right? So um, I've just added that there. Now, in this text section, I want to place it where I want to be able to see it on the screen. So I could write in here, coins... Right, so that's the text that I want to see. Um, and I'm just going to change a few of these settings. If I click here, and in fact, if I hold down the Alt key, uh, let me click there again, hold down Alt, I'm actually going to put in the bottom uh, left-hand corner. That's where I'd like my text to be, bottom left-hand corner. But I don't want it touching the edge of the screen, so I'm just going to move this out a little bit. I'm 110 to maybe 25, and that'll move it out from the bottom of the edge of the screen a little bit. So that's about where I want my text to be. Um, I'm going to use the font Arial. I'll make it bold. Let's make it um, 26 point, I suppose. Um, 
Let's change my text. I'm going to actually make my text white. White on this screen would look okay. It'll stand out pretty well. So I'm just going to have white text. Um, I think that's it. That's all I really need to do for my text. I've set it up. That's kind of how I want my text, text to go. Now, what am I actually going to put on the screen? What do I actually want it to be seen? And how do I link that to the score as the guy picks up the coins? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back to my third person controller because he's the one who picks up the coins. I'm going to go to the script which I had called player bump. Click here, click edit script. Again, my script comes up in, the, in my editor. And here it is. And you can see this is what we did um, previously. So I'm just going to get rid of this message. Right, so there's my text right there. Now, well, I want to add a few things to make this so that it actually um, it works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I've got the module in um, from Unity. That is the AI. So I'm just going to put um, the user, oh, sorry, not the AI, the UI, the user interface. So I've just included that user interface in there. Now, it might load in the U Unity Engine one there, but I'm just guaranteeing myself that it works by adding that there. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable, right? So um, I'm going to write private. So this is a private variable. It's going to be an integer, and we're going to call it count. Okay, so that's that's it. That's pretty simple. I know what a variable is with a count. Um, and I'm going to create a variable that's public, that, that, that can be seen by everyone, that's actually going to have the text in it. So I'm just going to call it public. Um, it's going to be text. And we're going to call it count text. Okay, and I'll put a semicolon there. Okay, so that's the variable where the, the, the text is going to be essentially. Now I'm also going to, in my start section here, I better make my count equal to zero. Right, so that's you guys have done that before, you know what setting a count to zero is. And I'm going to have to create a function down below. So I'm going to call my function down below set count text. So I could do it in here, set count text, um, and that's going to call my function. So at the start of the game, it's going to call that function. It's going to call it and say, all right, what is set count text? Where is it at? What's it currently at? And in fact, during the game, we want to call it again. So we're actually going to call it down here as well when we're actually collecting coins. We want to call that function again, just make sure that we're consistently checking to see what's inside that function. So we're going to call that there. And in here, as you collect the coins, obviously we want to go count equals count plus one. We'll make each coin worth one, right? So count equals count plus one, well, semicolon there, semicolon there. So, so far we look like we're pretty good. So the game will start and we create an integer variable called count. Um, and we have some text that's going to be called count text. Now, we have a, ver uh, a function called set count text, which I'm about to make. And that'll check straight away to see what the text is and what should be present printed on the screen. Down here, if you run into coins, it increases the count. And it then says, all right, let's update that set count text. Let's make sure that what's printed on the screen is correct. Okay, so if we're going to make this function, we need to do it down here. And this function needs to be um, a pretty simple one. It's only like one or two lines, right? So I'm just going to write void. And what do I call it? Set count text. Set count text. And let me do my brackets. Oops, I always do that. Two curly brackets, hit return. Now inside my function here, I'm going to get this to say um, count text dot text equals, now this is what I want to say, um, equals, I want to say coins, colon space. I want to have a space between um, the word coins and the actual count of the coins plus count. Now, the count is an integer because I set it up as an integer, so we have to change it to a string. So we change it to a string, close those, put my semicolon at the end. That's it. That's, that's my function. So it's going to say, make the text up here where we can go and get the text, make the text say coins plus whatever the amount of coins are 
that have been converted into a string so it can put the two strings together so it presents it on the screen. So that should be it. That should actually work. I'm going to hit Command S to save that file. And all I've done is updated my player bump file because that's where we were getting the coins increasing. So I've, I've updated that. I'm just going to close this. I'm going to go back to my program here and you'll see it updates straight away. Now, one of the keys to this is how do I link the text picture that I've put on the screen, essentially the, the object on the screen, how do I link that to the code that I've just made down here for my player bump? And it's really simple, and this is why I use the legacy one, because it's really simple with the legacy one. I click on it, I drag it, and I put it into that global variable count text, and I just dump it in there. And so now it says, all right, there's that global variable count text, and whatever I produce in here, I'm going to send to text, and then text is going to display it on the screen. So that's why I just dragged it down. That's the link that it makes from the code that I just wrote to the actual text on the screen. So that should be it. So um, I'm just going to hit save. Should save pretty regularly. Hit play. Hope I've put everything in the right spot, and let's have a look. All right, so there's my coins down here, and they're currently zero. Here's my guy. I run around. I bump into the first coin. There we go, and it changed to one straight away. Go and get the next one, two, three. That's it, so now I've got my score essentially down here. Now I've still got my debug message coming down here in, in the log. You can go and take that off if you want, take that off the script. And then obviously you can set things like if score gets to um, 200, then go to the next level. Or if score gets to, um, I don't know, 50, make aliens come out and shoot the guy, or whatever it might be, right? So this is the way that we've got our game. So this is the end of this video. What I'll do is I'll add one more video at the end that shows you how to do like a win statement, you've won, and how to export the game so that you can actually play it somewhere. So um, that's what I'm going to do. Obviously, you can go through and add like 50 coins and hide the coins around your game and put them wherever you like. Um, you can do that, um, but... That's up to you. That's up to you how you set up your own game. At the end of the next video, I'll show you a variation of this game as well. It could be really great.